Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Commodore welcomes you to Lincoln Center. My name is Bob Truckenbrode, Vice President of Marketing for Commodore. And I will be your host for what promises to be a very exciting exhibition. For tonight is the world premiere of Amiga. Good evening. What you are about to witness is the result of an effort of research and engineering that began in 1982 and which to date has consumed over 100 man years of engineering talent, the Amiga computer. On this screen at the upper right, you see the icon for the workbench disk which we used to start the system. To the side of it, you find a window containing the icons of the top drawer of that disk. You see the clock and preferences tools, utility programs available under the workbench. And you see a selection of drawers containing other tools, projects, or other drawers. At Amiga, the user controls how he uses his time, not the computer. To give you another perspective, I'd like to bring up TextCraft, the word processor of the Amiga computer. TextCraft has a very rich user interface involving menus, cursor icons which change shape depending upon what portion of the screen you're operating in, and a very rich graphical display to make sure that the user always understands what is going on. Let's talk a little bit more about the graphics that the Amiga computer can produce. We're going to bring up a test pattern showing all 4,096 colors of the Amiga computer on screen simultaneously. I'd like to bring up one more static image. This is an image that's been in the graphics community for some time the infamous mandrel, shown here in 640 by 400 pixel resolution. Now for one other item. All of these pictures you've been seeing have not only been brought up in screens, they've been brought up in windows. In fact, there are two copies of the mandrel up there. I wouldn't want to meet that in a dark alley. <laughs> the static graphics of the Amiga computer are impressive. But the real exciting thing on the Amiga is its dynamic or moving graphical images. Operating in screens, hardware area fill. As you can see, the screen system works even with dynamic graphics. Firmware support for the area fill system handles the general case, including crossing edges and islands. The Amiga computer is a true multitasking computer. In the upper left, a printing application. On the right, a sorting application with variable fonts, graphics in the middle, and word processing at the bottom. What does this mean from a practical standpoint? It means that a user can bring up displays faster than ever before. It means that a user can control his own path through an analysis of a business or engineering problem. We're going to bring up a couple of three-dimensional charts for you now to show you what I mean. The interesting thing about these charts 
is that they're being built from data built into the program. This really is how long it takes to build a chart like this once the data has come in off the disk. There, a bar chart, now a pie chart. All running in Windows, in screens. They're both there at the same time. You can switch back and forth between them at will until you get all of the information you need to out of them. Anything that can be displayed on the Amiga can be created on the Amiga. Equally exciting is the sound generating capability of the machine. The Amiga contains four hardware sound channels, each capable of reproducing arbitrary waveform polyphonic sound. And with all four of these channels going simultaneously, the 68000 is idle. But let me give you just a taste of the types of sounds the Amiga computer can produce. Here we have a sound sampler program. Uh, let's try the clavis. <laughs> the base capabilities of the Amiga computer exceed the reproduction capabilities of most people's stereos. This is best demonstrated with a percussion sound, like the tom-tom. We even have a few outrageous sounds on here. My favorite is the power chord. The sound system of the Amiga computer is capable of generating many more sounds than those you just heard. It's also capable of generating speech, a system which truly speaks for itself. This is the Commodore Amiga first known computer speaking. I can speak in a male voice. And a female voice. I can speak very quickly. And I can speak slowly. I can speak in a very expressive voice. Or I can change the mode and speak in a monotone just like a real computer. <laughs> the real power of the Amiga computer comes in what we would call animation. Depending upon your perspective, you might call it real-time dynamic analysis or simulation. What it involves is the generation of synchronized high-performance dynamic graphics synchronized with sound and multitasking. I'd like to bring up one more animation now. This one, Robo City. There's quite a lot going on in this image. If you look at the right times, you'll see animation on top of animation on top of animation with correct saving and restoring of the background. You see multitasking going on here. The fire hydrant and the dog that don't like each other are separate tasks doing a proximity check. Again, all written on top of the standard support routines, given away with every Amiga computer. You know, it's hard. It's hard to be innovative in an industry which has been dominated by one technology for so long. We at Commodore Amiga knew that to do this, we would have to be at least an order of magnitude better than anything anyone had ever seen. We've done that. And then we decided, why stop there? Why not include that older technology in what we had already done? And so we did that too. The result is this, the emulator, which turns your Amiga computer into an IBM personal computer. Yes, it's done in software. How does it work? That's a secret. How well does it work? Judge for yourself. This is an IBM PC DOS system disk. And this is a data disk from an IBM PC. And this is a program that I think at least a few of you in the room are probably familiar with. 
Lotus one, two, three. Standard vanilla IBM DOS. <laughs> At this point, we'll swap in the Lotus system disk and switch over to Lotus. I apologize for the delay, but it takes exactly as long to load 123 on an Amiga computer as it takes on an IBM PC. <laughs> now we're going to load in a data file off of that IBM data disk I showed you a moment ago. This is an income statement of the famous Acme Widget Corporation. As you can see, they're anticipating a loss in 1985, but we've changed the cost of goods sold for them, and with a simple recalculation, they make a profit. Traditionally, we end all demos of the Amiga computer with one of our original graphic demos, produced way back in 84. <laughs> it's an old standby, but still one of my favorites. In living color, on multiple screens, follow the bouncing ball. Well, there you have it, the Amiga computer. We've lived our dream and seen it come to life. Now it's your turn. What will you do with the Amiga computer? Thank you. We have asked our uh, resident Amiga artist, Jack Hager, to sit in with him. Are you ready to paint me? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here tonight to help assist uh, Andy do his first computer portrait using the Amiga computer. First off, Andy is going to take a digital snapshot of Debbie, which is running on this system, and you can see the image up there on that screen. And we just select the image, and it comes down. You found it to be uh, very spontaneous, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, it's great. It's such, it's such a great thing. <laughs> what more can you say? Uh, well, I can it does say a lot that. of things. <laughs> oh, that looks very good. So now we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do the hair. So we'll uh, go up to color uh -huh. and pick yellow. Andy is selecting from the menu bar, which gives you all the features of the, the uh, paint system. And he's selecting fill. And this is a, s a slow version of the fill, just so you can see how Andy decides to work. Now, this is an instance of a leaky flood fill. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this is kind of pretty. Mm -hmm. I think I'll keep it. Okay. Oh, it's beautiful. Mm. Well, with that piece being finished, Andy, I've been asked to give you an interview, forgive the pun. Um, uh, what computers have you worked on before? Oh, I've worked on anything. I've waited uh, for this one. Really? <laughs> well, it's obvious that Amiga will be many things to many people. So many things, in fact, that we had to think long and hard to come up with a symbol, an emblem worthy of such a talented computer. In order to communicate Amiga's phenomenal animation components and color capabilities, we focused on classic beauty and truly superior performance. And tonight, on this stage, that emblem is about to come to life.
Star of the Night.